Lunar Light Entertainment proudly presents The Hundred Day Magical Challenge Pathways of the Magi Greetings and salutations, wanderers and wayfarers. Have you ever felt the allure of the subtle mystery of ancient tomes or the excitement of making breakthroughs in your spiritual journey? Well, the world of magic and the great work beckons to you, ready to reveal esoteric methods spanning centuries that can grant you real development of your true spiritual gifts. This is going to be the 100-Day Magical Challenge Pathways of the Magi, an opportunity to go deep within yourself and awaken the ancient mysteries of spirit. This autumn equinox coming up next week, guys, we're going to be launching in to the 100-Day Magical Challenge once again. So dare to take the first step on the pathway beyond the threshold, past the guardian of the gate, and beyond the fathomless cavern into the realms of twilight. Join me and special guest Thomas Sund on the 100-Day Magical Challenge. So with no further ado, Thomas, are you ready to join us on the 100-Day Challenge? Uh, hey, <laughs> Frank, good to see you. Yes, absolutely. That's going to be it's going to be amazing. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, we have talked a little bit about this. So I'm going to be your guinea pig here. I'm going to be your student, in a sense, but also teacher assistant, I suppose, because I'm going to be providing a few different things from my end as well to support the challenge. I know that. Uh, very excited to be here for sure. Why don't you tell our viewers what the challenge is? So, so this time going into the 100 day challenge, we're, we're going to be looking at the elemental grades of magic. And so we'll be working with the spirits of each element, right? So for the earth, we've got the gnomes and so on and so forth. And the fire, the salamanders, we're going to be trying to break through the veil of magical dreaming and getting really deep into uh, lucid dreaming and doing some exercises that will help us achieve that. We're also, of course, going to be working on the uh, magical wish list again. So if you've got your uh, your candle ready, you can fire it up and write out a Aladdin's Lamp magical wish list. And you, to support you on that, we, of course, reference you to the video that it works. Also, I'll be revealing for the first time ever in a program the abracadabra method for spontaneous manifestation of any desired result. I'm sure everybody's mm. probably familiar with the... Uh, the short incantation abracadabra, but I'll be showing mm. you how I use that. And there are going to be a lot of other things as well. We've got an entire regimen of morning to evening practice lined up for you. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I'll be doing the morning and evening. And uh, uh, because I have a busy days, just like many other people, we'll see what I can squeeze in throughout the day. But um it's going to be very interesting. We've talked a little bit about dream work, right? So, so keeping track of dreams. So waking up in the morning, um, I'll be keeping a dream journal, um, going to bed at night. I'll have a little bit of a ritual, a little bit of a practice to prepare for, for the night. Uh, I'll do my very best to keep regular hours too, because I think that's going to be important, you know? Um, so this challenge is a hundred day challenge. And we've been doing some challenges before, right? So you and I have done, this is our third challenge together, I believe. So you've done plenty before as well, but I've joined you on the magical challenge, which people can see videos of. I've joined you on the hypno apotheosis where I was co-teacher because it was hypnosis. I'm a hypnotherapist. And now this one is going to be um, uh, something completely new and exciting. But you've been practicing magic for a long time. When did you start? I, I do have a long career in magic. I officially began my studies early when I was like a teenager and I was just kind of getting into the, the magical idea. But uh, I, in, in my youth, I amassed a large collection of everything that was available at the time. So we're thinking Llewellyn and Wisner and um, Penguins and all of these different book publishers that were bringing the old uh, Golden Dawn type material into the new era, as it were. So yeah, yeah I, I began magical practice at a very young age. I would say 13, 14, 15, something like that. So I've been cons consistently doing it for over 30 years now. And wow. in, that, uh, in that journey, I've learned a little bit 
I, I consider myself to be kind of a, a lifelong neophyte though, because I love, I love the, the entering of the thing and yeah. uh, the mystery of going into it. So I, I've yeah. spent a lot of my practice going from the, the mundane ordinary world into the magical world. I, I think that it's something you have to renew and refresh kind of every day. Yeah. It How about me yourself? Different... You have some exposure to magic as well. But... No, I'm not sure if I can properly call it magic, but I had my first out of body experience when I was about 16 and that triggered an interest in, in uh, things that we perhaps the intangible perhaps, you know, uh, and the spiritual uh, aspects of, of who we are. Um, I'm not a religious person, but I consider myself to be a spiritual person. And from my experiences of out-of-body experiences and also just in traveling uh, around the world, you do have to keep a beginner's mind. I think this is the phrase I'm looking for. And um, when you are exposed to new things, you are subliminating them, you're integrating them into your personality. So, so there are Ma there are a lot of overlap of finding a quality in your life and magical practice. And there's a lot of things that I've been doing that in hindsight, I would call magical practices, but maybe not formal. Um, but now this is about creating a little bit new rituals and having a bit of a formality to it. So it's, it's going to be measurable and that's what i like because we're going to be going through this challenge and we're going to be able to have a little bit of a feedback session looking at sticking points looking at what's going on so i'm very excited about this and and i have my tarot cards as well because that's going to be a little part of this challenge if right why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on here this is the ace of pentacles can you tell us a little bit of what's going on here right Sure, that card represents the earth element. That's where we'll be starting our adventure on this one is in through, going through the elemental grades like they do in the Golden Dawn. So we'll go right. from earth to air to water and then on to fire. And so the earth element, the Ace of Pentacles, is the beginning of all things related to the, the physical and your financial and your possessions and your immediate environment. So all of yeah. those prime material planes will be going from you know, Malkuth, as it were, the prime material plane down at the bottom of the tree of life. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going up the tree, you know. Uh, that's one thing you'll, you'd like to get probably in preparation for this. We're going to be making some pentacles for the the earth. And yeah. um, so you'll be making a basic pentagram. You're also going to want to get yourself a tarot deck. I recommend the one you have, which is the Ryder White Smith tarot deck. So the reason a lot of people start with that one is because it's the most ubiquitous and it's the most easily recognizable one. Also, Arthur Edward Wyatt, the, the person who developed it, was a member of the Golden Dawn, one of the founding mm. members. And yeah. he put a lot of the symbology and icon iconography into it that's important to the Western mystery tradition. Another yeah. thing, if you like, is to get yourself some form of ceremonial robe or a garment that you wear specifically when doing ritual mm. work. Mm. And then uh, uh, as we go through each elemental grade, we'll try to attain the tools of the magician, which you may know there are four. There's a, a pentacle, uh, uh, athame, if I'm saying that correctly, a cup or chalice of some form, and then finally a, a magical wand. So very exciting mm. stuff. Mm. Now, and and I know that it's in all of these things, it's actually very beneficial if you can make them yourselves, maybe the cup not, you know, I don't know if you can make a cup that easily, but a wand you can make, you can have a knife, uh, you know, we talk about swords, of course, so maybe you have a dedicated knife to it, or even something that is an approximation of a knife. And if you don't have anything, just use your fingers, right? <laughs> That's fine too. It's about symbology. Uh, a couple of books as well. We'll, I think we'll be talking more about books in the future. We have talked about a couple of books that we'll be using, uh, but instead of discussing them here and now, this is just a little bit of an introduction. We'll save that for later, I think. So uh, I'll be your uh, sort of guinea pig. So I'm, uh, let me see here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to outline my magical wish list based on it works. There's plenty of recordings online as an audiobook, or you can probably download it or read it online. Uh, I'm going to 
have a uh, magic journal. I'm going to have a notebook dedicated to this challenge. And I'm going to have a dream journal. So a little notebook where I can write down what's happening when I wake up in the morning, hold on to dreams. And then I'll, throughout the day, uh, I'll be doing a little bit of physical exercise. That's part of the earth element. And I'll be doing the LBRP, the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, which is a, which is usually um, something you do together with a Kabbalistic cross. So it's so a Kabbalistic cross LBRP. Um, what is the time commitment throughout a day in this challenge? I know people are busy. What What do you think? Because I've actually already done a um, completed daily lesson plan or a regimen, mm. I guess you might call mm. it, or a routine that I yeah. have a, a two-page document that kind of highlights what the best practices for a single day would be. And um, I, did, I did a little bit of the tallying back and forth with you on this one. And I think I determined that it's about a 30 minute commitment each day. So that's divided up into about 15 to 20 minutes in the morning and then mm. 15 or so 10 to 15 minutes in the evening. And if you really want to go the extra mile, you're going to want to um, sequester a little bit of time, five or 10 minutes at the midday point as well. It, it, it is important to try to uh, connect your spirit and soul with the solar energy by doing the four adorations. If you can't do all four adorations, you should come up with a kind of uh, simple, sincere, um, forthright adoration to w whatever spiritual faith you have in the yeah. morning yeah. and in the evening. But yeah, right. it's, it, it's going to boil down into about a 30-minute 30, 30 practice. After all, it is a challenge, and it's a little more rigorous than some of the previous challenges we've done. Mm. But we've also said that 100% uh, for 10 days and 90% for 100 days. I mean, that's good enough, right? So the idea is to create a new Absolutely. habit a little bit of introducing this ritual into your life and then harvest, so to speak, reap the results, you know, and, and figure out what's going on, what's useful for you. And um, so my expectations from this, of course, for each element, there's going to be one particular goal. So earth element, I'm going to be silly and I'm actually going to buy one lottery ticket every week and see if I can win some money, you know, because material wealth uh, is, or, or physical, you know, money is also part of the phys uh, the earth element. Uh, but that's just a little bit of a silly start. I have some proper goals that I'm going to be sharing, uh, talking about and making headway on throughout this uh, challenge. Um, and then towards the end of this challenge, we're going to look at the major arcana as well. So, so not only the pentacles, but we have the, the other archetypes perhaps that exist, but that comes much later when we deal with spirit. Um, it's going to be fun and uh, I'm looking forward to it very, very much. Um, some closing words perhaps, um, Freighter Francis? Yeah, certainly. Anyone who's interested in enjoy joining us on the 100 day magical challenge um the document will be available on www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash frank monday so you can get it there i'll put it up there for free again when you visit the coffee page there's no obligation to buy anything so it'll be there available free i probably will not put the actual documents here on youtube just because it's not as as appropriate as a um, place for it and um so by reaching out and going there that will give you access to a little bit more material, some of my blogging and some of those documents. Um, additionally, anyone who uh, joins us on this, you know, realize that as within any spiritual tradition, the more people that converge on an idea and practice together, the greater strength those things will have. And as mm. we all launch into this initiation, and start to do these things together, we'll be able to support each other and give each other feedback and yeah. you know like you said a moment ago as a measurable scientific process yeah. we can be more pragmatic about it than just having absolutely. our head in the cloud so to speak so absolutely it's a great opportunity for anyone interested in taking the next step in their spiritual cultivation absolutely uh yeah there'll be a discord as well 
and uh, I'll be doing some meditations, guided meditations that can uh, support the work as well, because obviously that's my forte. And that's it. That's fantastic. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. And we'll be doing regular videos so that people can follow what's going on. And um, yeah, we we love feedback. So anyone who joins this challenge, uh, we'll be discussing in the Discord, and we'll be having perhaps a little bit of feedback on YouTube as well. Uh, so we'll be available to to talk and discuss and share and lead and guide if necessary throughout this challenge. And uh, yeah. What is it that you always say? Do good magic. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, at Astro Paraspera. And uh, as we go into the, as we uh, wander into the abodes of the future, keep doing good magic, everyone. Yeah. And uh, Thomas, I, I think I failed to shout out as well that uh, you're going to be mirroring some of the information uh, and you will be doing some supplementary material on your site as well here on YouTube. So guys, yeah. make sure to check in the description of this video, you will see you will see a link to all of the things that we've mentioned here. In yeah. addition to joining the Discord, we'll both be available there uh, periodically. So make sure you guys tune in and uh, keep up with the challenge.